Welcome to this week's episode of Bear Archery's Hunting 101. I am excited. I've got Chris Colston, who is a country music singer from Texas, and I got a video sent to me not too long ago of a guy in a tree stand, and he's shaking like a leaf, and he's crying, and he's emotional because he shot his first deer with a bow, that being a spike deer. And I started going through his social media and realizing that he's a country singer, and he's an influencer, and he still showed pure raw emotion over shooting his first deer since then he's went on a killing streak of killing some really big deer and so we just kind of talk about his intro to bow hunting uh his journey that he's taken into getting into bow hunting kind of the struggles and obstacles that he's had to face not only from you know getting negative comments about that first deer but also learning and growing and and maturing as a bow hunter and so it's a really good episode it's really informative it's Really kind of just an inspirational, fun episode to to talk about a guy's journey into bow hunting. So I hope you enjoy it. As always, this episode is brought to you by Scentlock. Welcome to Bear Archery's Hunting 101 podcast, where hunters new and old come to learn and find inspiration from stories of hunts gone by. Everyone is welcome to enjoy the outdoor way of life, and there is no better time to start than right now. So let's head into the great outdoors with your host, Dylan Ray. Guys, if you have been around archery much at all, then you've probably heard the name Lancaster. And for good reason, Lancaster Archery is well known worldwide and they have an incredible reputation worldwide. Why? Because they're archery experts on all things archery. From bow hunting to 3D shooting, from recurves to compounds. If it's archery, they not only sell the products, but they know the products. Guys, Lancaster is your one-stop shop for all things bear archery. Every compound, recurve, all the equipment. But outside of bear, they have everything you need from arrows and broadheads to, to bow building equipment. Everything. Guys, Lancaster Archery is a name that you can absolutely trust. They put out some of the best information that you can find just about anywhere. So I would highly encourage you to not only shop at LancasterArchery.com because you can trust in the products you're buying because they know about the products that you're buying, but also I would highly encourage you to check out all of their resources, not only on their website, but on their YouTube channel because they are a wealth of knowledge on all things archery. So guys, check out Lancaster Archery. They're your one-stop shop, not only for all of the equipment that you could ever possibly need that's archery-related, but also all of the information that you would ever need that is archery-related. LancasterArchery.com. Go check them out. All right, Chris, it's not often that uh, that I have an LSU fan on the show. <laughs> Like that's not yeah. often at all. Um, but one video that I saw, I got a video forwarded to me and they said, dude, you got to get him on the show. And, uh, that video was you shooting a spike. Didn't show the, vi didn't show the shot, but, um, showed your reaction to the shot. And you had mentioned it's my first year with a bow. Um, and just your, your pure authentic reaction to shooting this deer. I was like, I got to get him on the show. Um, so, I got I got several questions, kind of how that journey began, but walk me through that story, like that how how that all happened. Yeah, so my um, obviously, you know, I had never bow hunted before. My buddy Jake Murphy had given me a bear bow. Uh, I think it was one of the first ones he got, and um, so he just he gave it to me. And said, "Hey, man, you know, take this thing seriously. Do this will this will change the whole game." And I always blew off bow hunters my whole life. I was a rifle guy, like hands down. I was like, you know, just kind of blew off bow hunters. So I started practicing. I was like, okay, maybe this is a maybe this is going to be a cool deal. Maybe I'm going to enjoy this more. And so, yeah, man, it's just my little deer lease. It's like 25 minutes from my house. I had been getting pictures of some deer in the front corner of our food plot, and uh, saw this spike coming in. And in the county that we hunt in that you can you're allowed to take one spike legally so i was like man that'd be a good first like that'd be a good first like bow kill to get under my belt and so i went that day actually that morning and set up a stand it was super super overcast and uh, i set it up like 25 yards off of a, a rub line and uh got up in the tree like 
late afternoon and it was real, real like foggy and it was kind of drizzling rain. Anyway, I just kind of looked, looked to my left, saw some movement and here comes that spike I was getting pictures of and had like a little corn pile, like literally it's like 17 yards from the stand. And uh, he came in and I drew back and just smoked him, you know, just like the video says. And I don't know what it was, man, but it just like it just uh, overcame, just overcome with emotion. I mean, it just like it just hit me like after I realized like the arrow went through and like I heard him crash. And I was like. I had never really felt anything like it. And I've been hunting my whole life. I mean, there's, you know, there's deer on the wall in here and I've got everything from, you know, 120s to 150s to 140s mounted inside my house. But to shoot one with a bow for the first time, I just couldn't contain it. So while I was shaking, I was like, maybe I should like make some kind of like content for this. Cause like, and you know, all bow hunters and hunters in general know, like you can't bottle that kind of emotion. Like you can't just, turn it on randomly it has to happen in that moment when you're slinging an arrow or or you know shooting a gun so yeah dude and i just videoed myself and then as i videoed it was like i kept popping myself up and i was getting more <laughs> worked up and more worked up and i was like dude you need to calm down you're gonna fall out of this tree and so yeah i just dude i just had the video and honestly what's funny about that video is i didn't even i wasn't even gonna post it because i thought you know, people were going to make fun of me or whatever because it was just a spike. But I had just gotten a TikTok account and my management was like, hey, you know, aside from your music content, we need more like lifestyle content. So I sent it to my manager. He's like, dude, post this. This is great. So I kind of forgotten about it. And I went to get my wife ice cream at like 10 o'clock at night. And so I just posted it on the way to get ice cream and put my phone down. And then I had people texted me like 10 minutes later and it was going viral and it was blowing up. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so that's kind of the whole story in a nutshell of how it went down. So how long ago was that just for reference? I can't remember. I think that was last deer season or the deer season before. Well, the I reason I ask, well, I don't want to get into that yet, but actually I so can tell you because it's on an arrow up here. Hold on. Looks like November 3rd of 2021. November 3rd, 2021. Yeah, now, you had obviously <clears throat> You had obviously shot deer before that with a rifle like you said. So what do you think made it so much different? Like because man, I've shot deer. I started off with a rifle like a lot of guys and you know, like right. you said, you never feel that like pure raw emotion until yeah. it's done with a bow. Like, what do you like, think makes it me, different? I think it makes a difference. Well, I mean, for me, even shooting with a rifle as a kid, it's like I would still get worked up just like that. But like, I just think being that close to that, you know, growing up in so growing up in East Texas is real thick, like really hard cover, and so we never get the chance to get that close to a deer it's always you know hunting in a box stand you know hunting right of ways that are 100 150 yards long just i don't know just growing up it was just like i didn't have any bow hunters in my family so it was never really a thing but i think what makes it better I, for me it was just being able to i think it was just being that close to that animal i had never been that close to a, a wild like a deer before you know, other than driving on the side of the road or something, but actually sitting there and it coming in and not knowing that you were right there, I think kind of hyped it all up. And when I pulled my bow back, being able to see that deer's eyeballs. Yeah. And you're like, no, and it's fixing to go down. You're like, holy, holy smokes. I've tricked this thing. Like it has no idea that I'm fixing to thwack it, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Man. So I don't So. I think why did you write off bow hunters? Like I want to get into that. What what made you write off bow hunters? I just me being, you know, just I don't know, prideful, I guess, you know, just because I was just a passionate I love rifles, I love guns, I love shooting guns. And so, you know, I always thought it was, you know, you know, I always heard stories of, you know, people shooting one with a bow and 
it running off and not being able to find it. And you know what's funny? And I think what it might have been is my stepdad, which is kind of funny because he's Native American, but he said his uh, his thing to bow hunting was always, hey, look, I feel bad enough when I shoot one with a rifle. And if the slight chance that I can't find that deer, much less cut it up with an arrow. And so I was like, oh, I never thought of it like that. You know, I think that kind of put a bad like image in my head and he wasn't mean to, you know, he was just saying that was kind of his view on it. And I didn't appreciate it until I got older. And then I'm like, dude, these guys get to hunt a whole month earlier than I do, you know, and, a whole and they've month got longer. these deer and a whole month longer and, and they've got these deer, you know, in a pattern where they're kind of pretty much more or less doing the same thing every day. Dude, this is cake. Like I would so much rather do this than wait till, mid November when they're running around like crazy on the off chance that one comes through on the rut. So, um, I don't know. I think it's just being young, you know, and just not really appreciating it and not ever doing it. It was kind of knocking it before I tried it. And now, I've, you know, then I tried it and I'm absolutely hooked. I mean, I'll still pick up a rifle, but I'm absolutely hooked shooting a bow. It's yeah. just, it's way it's, it's just more challenging. Yeah. It, it levels the playing field, if you will. Um, Absolutely. And that's why, you know, so many people, they think that rifles would be more socially acceptable because you're putting the deer down quicker, faster, easier, um, gives you more room for error, all those sort of things. But the overwhelming majority of the non-hunting community is more open to the idea of bow hunting than they are rifle hunting because you're leveling the playing field. And a right. lot of people... A lot of people don't get that. Like they don't get, you know, when you switch to a bow or when you switch to a recurve from a compound, when you, when you make a jump, you know, used to 150 yards, dude, the deer's dead. Let's move on. But at 150 yards with a bow, your hunt's just beginning. And then you right. switch to a recurve where at, you know, 40 yards of the compound, that deer's dead. Well, 40 yards of the recurve, your hunt's just beginning. Like, so right. you just continue to bring in that, that level of of difficulty and and giving the deer more advantages while also like you said giving yourself more opportunity right and that's what i, I don't see it's a win-win you know what i mean no yeah absolutely and like i said i think some of it had to do with just like growing up just not really not appreciating it like not not really knowing anybody that that bow hunted or it was ever a thing it was always you know you go to your lease and, you know, when opening day opens for rifle, you go out and hunt. I didn't know anybody that was real passionate about bow hunting. And dude, when I got into it, as soon as I killed that first year from that moment in that video, I was like, oh my God, how many more times can I get this close to an animal? Like I'm ready to practice. I like, I, I bought in completely and I, I've never been more like excited, like that emotion when I kill something and more frustrated at the same time. It's like i I shot one of the biggest deer of my life last season and just hit him this much too high into no man's land up on the back. And that deer ended up living and showing back up on cameras and it just makes you sick. But it's part of, you know, it, that's the challenge, you know, that was, that was on me for, you know, not being as accurate as I can be. And then, I went and practiced and it just makes you better. It's kind of like golf. It's all on you. It's, it's on nobody else, but you. Yeah. But golf sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I can't say that. I love golf. It's, it's just as challenging. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, let's not get into the whole golf argument here, but, um, <laughs> so here's what I've appreciated. Um, looking through social media, you started off with a spike, but then dude, you started killing bangers. Like I look through there, I'm like, dang, that's a giant. That's a good deer. Dang, man. You graduated quick. Like it wasn't, yeah. you know, a lot of dudes shoot a spike and then a forky and then a small basket rack six. And then, a, you know, they graduate. You went from shooting spikes to bangers, like just almost automatically. What'd that journey look like for you? What'd that, what'd that progression look like for you? I think I, I do have to give a lot of credit to my buddy, Jake Murphy here in Texas. He has a channel called. Uh, on tour outdoors is where they take musicians out and they film their hunts. And I think I have to give him a lot of credit because, you know, he, he basically lended me that bare bow, you know, and said, Hey, 
you know, you take this serious, you know, he has a really good relationship with you guys. And he's like, Hey, I'm going to try, I'll try to get you, you know, a, a better bow after that. You know, if I see that basically that you're taking it seriously. So man, he saw me shoot that spike. He saw the video and then he's like, Hey, come down and do this hunt in central Texas, um, at our buddy Hunter's ranch. And I'm going to film you. And then I get down there and I shoot a huge hog at like 40 yards, perfect video. And then the next day, uh, I shoot an A point and he's like, dude, you're like, you're serious about this. So then he ended up helping me with some connections with you guys and ended up getting an, uh, a nicer bow, a better, like an upgrade, you know, from where I was. And it was just off the races. Like then I started going to, I met a guy at a show who invited me to his ranch in Oklahoma. And that's what he's got a bunch of hammers up there. And, um, we kind of go through the process of picking out which one I can shoot and which one I'm allowed to, which one I'm not. And just kind of putting a game plan. I've always been a diehard hunter. I've always loved the process of killing a big deer, the food plots, the work, the off season. So, uh, yeah, man, it just kind of slowly started graduating and I've been fortunate enough to take a lot of good deer. And during that process, I have missed, you know, several times I've missed good bucks. Like I said, that my biggest deer, I would have ever killed is still out there on the, on the, on the loose. You know, and I think there's something to be said about that. And I'm not saying anything uh, bad against the guy who says, I want to start hunting and they spend $1,200 on a bow. I'm not saying anything bad against that guy. But I think a lot of guys try to cover up lack of work and dedication by just buying better equipment. And what I mean by that is, is they think that if I just spend the money that it's going to be easier. I don't have to practice as much. It's a better bow. It'll shoot more accurate. I can get away with more, whatever they think that that reasoning is. And so I almost respect that, that mentality of like, get good with this and then we'll upgrade you. Like get good with, with what you have and then we'll progress you into better equipment. And that's why like my kids, like they start with budget bows my wife started with a budget bow and I've, I've since upgraded her, but you know, I just wanted her to learn like, Hey, you can be accurate with a bow that costs 300 bucks. So show me yeah. that you want this, like show me that you, and that first year she killed two does with that $300 bow. And I'm like, okay, well, let's upgrade you because you've practiced, you've taken it serious. You're efficient with this. So now let's get you better equipment and let's up, like, let's, let's progress you through the stages rather than starting you to the max. And there's really nowhere to go. Um, and when I say two does, man, I mean, we're talking big, mature Kansas deer that weighed 350 pound does. Not, I'm just kidding, but that was an exaggeration. Um, <laughs> but in all reality, they were, they were 175, 200 pound does, you know, that weighs more than a massive buck in a lot of Southern States. So oh yeah, that she obviously showed me like I can make it happen with this bow. Um, and so I wanted to upgrade her. Now, again, I don't want people to hear this and be like, well, I guess I can't buy a good bow. That's not what I'm saying. But don't try to cover up lack of work with just trying to upgrade equipment. Like, right. So many, I had a guy call me last two months ago and he said, Hey, I want to buy an Execute 32, which is Bear's flagship for this year. And I said, How come? And he said, Well, this, uh, I think he was shooting like an, uh, like a, um, I want to say a, oh, I don't know, a legit maybe. Uh, a budget, a, a beginner's bow. And he said, I just can't really get accurate with this. And I said, so why do you think upgrading is going to make that better? Um, well, it's a better bow. Right. It's, it's faster. It's quieter. It's, and I said, you're right. Like it will make you more accurate. However, you should be able to get accurate with that bow. Like you should be able to figure out what you're doing wrong and shoot that bow good. And right. then let's upgrade you, but don't just try to skip the hard work by, thinking you can upgrade bows. And so I, I honestly respect that mentality. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, like after I killed that spike, you know, and I started practicing even more, even more. And and I've even realized too, and it, it depends. It varies for Hunter. You know, you know, like I get, I'm the type of Hunter that gets extremely worked up very quick. And I have to calm myself down, like when a big animal comes out. I mean, even a hog, even a doe, it doesn't matter. Like, there's just something about it. I don't know. It's in me and I can't help it. Um, 
I have to work myself and you, and you know, like pulling back a bow when you're doing all that, you've got to be steady and you've got to calm yourself down. And I say this all the time, shooting a target in the backyard is 1000 times different than when a freaking monster steps out in front of you at that same yardage. It doesn't matter how many times you've drilled that dot at 20 yards. When that sucker walks out, when that 160 walks out with kickers and stickers going everywhere and he's 20 yards and he's looking at you like dead on and sees you pull back in that tree and you're fixing to send it. It's, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. And that's what I love about it. And it, and it helps me work on calming myself down as well and kind of just being, you know, trying to get good under pressure. And once you accomplish that, I think kind of the sky's the limit as far as, you know, your confidence level. I think a lot of bow hunting is confidence that I've learned about too. Like, what you're confident in yourself doing. And that's why I love it so much. So that is, in my opinion, one of the biggest obstacles to overcome for new hunters in that moment, being able to calm yourself down, being able to reel yourself in, if you will. Um, and, and I don't know why I've never had that issue. Um, yeah, you know, and, and to be honest, my dad was kind of worried about that. He was like, um, you must not be into this much because, you didn't, you know, that emotion. Right. Now, I, dude, I, I'm like you. I lose it after I shoot it. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I've just always been able to stay calm in the moment. Um, right. But for most new hunters, for the, for the overwhelming majority of new hunters, that's one of the biggest things to overcome. So yeah. how do you, in that moment, try to reel yourself in? How do you try to, to, to keep that under, under control? Man, honestly, it's it's kind of funny you say that because uh, last season I killed a I killed a nice ten point up in Oklahoma. I had been hunting him for several days, and when he walked out, he, you know, it's like I don't know, it's weird. It it looked like he looked right at me, and then he just kind of turned and just kept walking exactly where I needed him to go. Some of it for me is trying not to look at the rack for sure, um, and some of it, most of it is just. I always had the problem, even when I was rifle hunting, when the deer walks out to get the rifle up, get the scope, you know, on. As soon as you get the opportunity, you're pulling the trigger, you're not giving it any time. And that's, you know, what we call rushing the shot. And so I was doing that with my bow, too. And I was just like pulling back and finding that spot and, thump, and done. And not necessarily realizing, hey, look, the deer has no idea you're there. They're kind of just milling around, like watching the behavior of the deer, take your time, breathe, you know, don't draw back, you know, and just, it's going to be okay. You know, like, and so I think that's my big deal is telling myself to breathe as many deep breaths as possible, as quiet as possible. And when you're ready, just pull back, find that spot and just touch off the trigger. And I even happened Actually, in that video, I was talking about me shooting that hog in Central Texas. I pulled back at 40 yards, and I was fixing to pull the trigger, and my buddy was next to me. He said, take your time. And it was that little split second. I was like, oh, yeah, dude, you're good. Like, that pig's not going anywhere. And then I pulled the trigger and probably made, you know, the best shot I ever have on an animal. And it was just like, yeah. dang, that that one extra split second, you know, was the difference of, you know, a dead hog or – you know, a complete mess. Well, and that's for me, once I know, like once I see a deer, whether I see him at 200 and I look through my binos and I'm like, yeah, that's the one wherever I decide. And sometimes they come in quick and you don't see them. But, but from the moment I decide that's the one I'm shooting, don't look at the antlers again. Not, right. not one more time. Do I continue to look at the antlers once I've decided right. And, you know, sometimes you have to study a deer. You know, sometimes you see a deer and you have to look through your binos and you're like, I don't know. Okay, he's got a kicker. He's got, you know, I don't. So you study the antlers a little longer. But once I decide that's the deer I'm shooting, I don't look at the antlers anymore. I focus on the spot I want to hit the entire time. And right. by doing that, it forces me to slow down because if I'm looking at the spot, I'm watching the way his shoulders coming back and I'm waiting for that front arm to come up and I'm waiting, you know, I'm waiting for that perfect opportunity at that one spot. Um, but also my, my recurve coach, uh, Mr. Tom Klum, uh, he walked me through a shot process 
And and this was was only a couple years ago, but it's really forced me to slow down in every whether it's a rifle, a, a, a compound, a recurve, whatever, it's forced me to slow down in every hunting situation because he said, this is your process. These are your verbal cues as you shoot your bow. Whether you're shooting at four yards or a hundred yards, whether you're shooting at a giant buck or a foam target, you walk through this process every single time. And what happens when you have a shot process, you know, when you think about, okay, my grip, my hook, my, my anchor, my picking a spot, pulling through my shot, when you think about all those things, you're not thinking about the deer. You're not thinking about how big he is, how good he's going to look on your wall, how cool of an Instagram picture you're going to get. You stop thinking about all those things and you're focused on you and you're focused on executing a perfect shot and your mind is busy with those verbal cues. And so you kind of lose that, oh crap, I'm about to shoot a giant buck mentality. Um, right. Practicing. I think it, it comes down a lot to how you practice. When it gets close to season, I shoot one arrow a day. That's it. Um, that's difficult for some guys, but it forces me to walk out in the morning. I have a platform I climb up on, so I'm like shooting from a tree stand. Um, right. I've got a bunch of 3D targets in the backyard. I pick the target, and I have one shot. Make it count. And all day long, right. I have to think about that shot. Crap, dude, I missed that. I, I shot a bit high. That deer is going to go for a mile before he's dead. Or, oh, dude, I, I drilled that that shot this morning. It forces me all day long to think about that shot. And so it kind right. of puts me in that moment of like, okay, you only get one shot, make it count. Um, also, getting your adrenaline up to practice, I think, helps a lot. Whether it's doing five burpees and then trying to shoot your bow. But it forces you to get your right. adrenaline up and say, okay, now I've got to calm myself down and make this shot. Um, so do those types of things. I had one guy, I was a young kid. I was probably... 14 and i was out shooting my bow before we were going hunting that night and this old man just said all right now run as fast as you can to get your arrow and run back and i'm like what and he said run up there as fast as you can grab your arrow and run back and so i did and i get back and he says okay now shoot it and i'm like <gasps> <laughs> and he said calm yourself and shoot your shot and i was like okay and so i started taking big deep breaths and like you said i just executed a shot and that was in that moment, I'm like, I'm never going to stop practicing like this because it forces me to calm myself down and shoot a good shot. Guys, when it comes to hunting and being outdoors, I believe there's one product that I use more than anything. That's not my bow. That's not my boots. It's not my um, anything else other than a binocular harness. If I am outside doing anything outdoors, I've got a binocular harness on, whether I'm shooting, whether I'm hanging tree stands, uh, whether I'm out hiking, it doesn't matter. If I'm outdoors doing just about anything, I've always got my binocular harness. Alaskan Guide Creations does it and does it very, very well. I've been using these now for about eight years and I absolutely love them. The new system with all the magnets are really good, um, really accessible, very customizable. Guys, if you're in the market for a new binocular harness, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to check out Alaskan Guide Creations because they are phenomenal. You mentioned the process. You mentioned loving the process of hunting, the whole chess match of, of, of bow hunting. Um, how, how different is the process from bow hunting as to rifle hunting when you're setting up stands, when you're deciding where you're going to hang and hunt when you're deciding, you know, where you want the deer to come from and go to, how different is that process? I think there, you know, it's not, it's not crazy different, but I would say there was, there's way, way more things that I started paying attention to um, that maybe I wouldn't have when I was rifle hunting. Like, like when I started bow hunting, I started realizing, okay, I've got to start, paying attention, you know, what times these bucks are coming in or crossing this area of my camera, what the wind direction's doing, where if I want to get close to where this deer's coming, what tree I need to hang on based off of, you know, the wind direction that's coming through that area for the majority of the year. Um, you know, just paying attention to patterning really and, you know, moon phases and times and everything, you know, when I was just, you know, when I was rifle hunting, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, climb up in this stand. It's a cold morning. They'll probably be moving. 
you know, and just kind of hoping that something, you know, walked out or chased a doe or whatever. And in the early season, it's kind of different because all the bucks are in a completely different pattern than when the cold snap comes and November hits and they're full on rut and you can't really get a grasp on what anything's going to do. I mean, it's just kind of a luck of the draw. You know, they're most likely everybody knows during the rut, you're not going to have a deer that's coming to a, a, a corn pile every single morning and night anymore. They're going to be running around doing their thing. So I think I will, I would say I've noticed more that I've paid a lot more attention to wind direction and how I approach, how I'm going to kill that buck. If I do have one coming in regularly, it's more of a game plan than just going out and sitting, you know? Yeah, dude, a hundred percent. And that's the point I wanted to make is like, for the rifle hunters out there who are like, oh, I, I love deer hunting. I love shooting deer, but you're in your situation. But bows, man, nah, dude, I'll just go out and shoot them with a, a rifle and be done. Switching to a bow forces you to learn more about the game you pursue, forces yep. you to learn more about what makes them move, what makes them uh, what makes them respond poorly. What what do I do that causes those deer to get spooked? When 100%. in the day are they moving most, least? How are they using these trails? It forces you to learn more about the deer. For another reason, it also forces you to, like I said, you know, with a rifle at 150 yards, you're done. But with a bow, you get to watch those deer for an extra 35 minutes before you shoot them. And so you're looking, you're, right. you're getting more of how they interact. You're watching more right. of how the bucks respond when another buck walks in the field. You're getting you're getting more knowledge on how a big buck responds when a doe walks by, or how a doe responds when a, a fawn steps out, or how a how bucks respond when they're in the field feeding and a coyote runs through. You're learning more about the species that you pursue. And you know, that for me was the biggest reason was was the not the biggest reason was one of the biggest benefits I found in starting to shoot a recurve as well because you know again at, at 40 yards you shoot the deer and you're done but now I got to get them into 20 17 15 whatever and I have an extra now more 20 minutes to watch them before they get there and I can shoot them so you know I think that even even if you don't if you're listening to this and you're a rifle hunter and you're like I'm not going to make the switch I, it's just Give yourself more time in the woods to watch deer, to learn deer, to observe how they act and how they respond, because it's only going to make you a better hunter in the long run. It's only going to make right. you more successful in the long run. Um, what do you think the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome in becoming a bow hunter is? I would say uh, uh, several. I mean, obstacles, really, I mean it's kind of like you said, like when you practice and you get up in that platform, like that's like super smart. I never really, you know, would have thought about that beforehand. I do now, but it's like part of the reason, I think part of the reason that, you know, I told you about that book that I shot last year, I hit him in no man's land. Well, I was hunting on this ranch in South Texas and I'm still, you know, fairly new to bow hunting. it, And so I went from hunting a 15 foot tower blind to the next day, I was sitting on the ground in a stump blind. So I'm going from, you know, sitting position, like I'm talking to you right now in a chair. And then from that position, then I'm up 15 feet in the tower and my bow position is completely changed. And that's something that I never really practiced was going from sitting to standing to kneeling to all different kind of positions. And it's all about angle. And so that's definitely one thing I would say that I had to overcome be and man, overcome it. Like when I slung that arrow and it, I saw it hit the deer and run off and oh my gosh, we were, yeah, you know, and then watching the video footage and then the guy going, I don't know if we're going to find him. I'm thinking what, you know, there's that much like margin for error. Like, I mean, I realized that I hit him high, but He's like, yeah, that's a strip where like if the arrow goes through, like there's probably not going to be much blood. He's just going to be limping. And I'm like, dude, that was heartbreaking. I mean, it was he was a giant. I still have the video on slow motion on my phone. I watch all the time to make sure. And I can still remember what I did wrong. It was just overcoming. You know, I just thought I had the pin on the right spot and I moved it up. Just I mean, just a hair, you know, like with well, a rifle scope wouldn't have made a difference. But that little Barely movement, man, cost me the biggest year of my life. So I think 
And the night before, I shot a deer at the same yardage at 20 yards, and doe ran, you know, 25 yards and fell over. Like, there's no reason I shouldn't have made that shot. So I think overcoming just a lot of it's mental and knowing you made that mistake, just kind of overcoming it and trying to get better at the next shot. I did almost the exact thing last year in Idaho on a bear. And I say I can keep myself calm with deer. I can't with bears. Yeah. Like <laughs> when a bear <laughs> comes in, dude, I'm 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 having a meltdown freak out. Why? Because I have nothing else to focus on. Like what I mean by that is like I, with a deer, I don't have to look at their antlers, but with a bear, I'm looking at how big he is the whole time he's coming in. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. You know, I just lose it right. with a bear. Um, and I did almost the exact same thing. I picked my spot and I'm like, all right. And this, we're talking 17 yards. And, uh, right. And this would have been my first bear with a recurve. And I was like, pump, dude. I'm like, this is perfect. He's calm. He's cool. He's doesn't have a care in the world. I'm going to smoke this bear with a recurve and move on. And I picked my spot and I'm holding. And then I, I, second guess myself just a little bit and i'm like well maybe the angle of the tree stands a little bit higher than i think it is so i need to shoot a little bit higher to come out good and i shot just a bit too high so right. i think there's something to be said about just trusting your instincts and like just knowing okay i've made this shot a yeah. thousand times just make the shot you know what i mean and yep. it comes down to confidence like you said building confidence in your shot and your equipment and your in your abilities and so I think a lot of dudes just need to trust their instincts. And, you know, I've made this shot a thousand times. Just make it again one more time. Um, but I also think that goes back to the way that we practice and the way that we shoot. Once I sight in a bow, I sight in a bow with dots. So I'm going to pull out a target with dots and I'm going to sight in my bow. But once I sight in a bow, I never, ever, ever shoot dots again. I shoot 3D targets. Um, right. because I want to know I can pick a spot on this deer. I can pick a spot on this bear. I can pick a spot on this hog, whatever it is and make a shot. And it's going to build confidence. You know, it's going to build that, that, that mentality of, okay, I've shot a deer target in my backyard at 20 yards, 17,000 times this year. I can do it again here. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about that. But it also it's all about practice. forces you to pick a spot. It yeah. does. Yeah. It's, that's it's what it comes all about down practice, to. Man. Absolutely. Now I'm curious to know, were there any keyboard warriors, any negative comments, any, why in the crap are you acting this way over a spike? Why are you even shooting a spike? Any of that that came from, from that video? Yeah. You know, it's actually funny you say that. Cause I was thinking about, you know, when you asked me to come on the podcast today, I was th actually thinking about this last night as I was coming home from planning food plots and stuff. I was I was thinking and I kind of went back through the video. I kind of revisited it. And. I would I have to say, you know, for the majority of it, like. I'd like to say, like. Ninety eight percent of all of the thousands of comments that I got, not only on TikTok, but like, you know, other people would repost it, other hunting pages or websites and stuff. I would say 98% of the comments were super positive, like very encouraging, very congrats, man. Like this is awesome. Like no better feeling. It, you know, actually, I think to me, it kind of felt like, that video kind of brought a lot of the hunting community kind of together again and kind of got everybody like hyped for the season coming up. Then now, of course, you know, as you know, on the internet, you can't please everybody. There were some people saying, why are you shooting a spike? Like let him grow and you know, yada, yada, or is it even legal to shoot a spike? It's just people that don't even know the rules and regulations of where I hunt or people, you know, you can't please everybody. Somebody has always got something to say. And so, but I would say for yeah. the majority, man, the comments were super uplifting. Uh, everyone was nice, dude. I mean, it got to the point where, you know, T-Bone Turner and Michael Waddell commented on it. And those are my two favorite hunters of all time. Those are guys that I grew up, you know, watching on TV. And, they, and he was like, man, this is what it's, you know, Michael Waddell's like, this is what it's about to be a true hunter. You, my friend, are a true hunter. And, 
it was just really cool, like getting comments from your heroes like that, you know. Michael, dude, he's a he's just a thug. Don't don't take anything Michael says. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he he is. I'm I'm proud to say he's become a buddy of mine, and uh, and he is as real as they come. And you know, I've learned that there's a lot of things you don't make in the industry as long as those guys have made it without being authentic, without being real. And, you know, yeah. it's one of those people you get to meet in real life and they're as real as you've ever hoped they would be. And so, and I think that is the point I want to make. When we show ourselves in a real light as hunters, it brings the hunting community together. Doesn't matter right. if you're shooting a spike or a 200 inch buck. When you show yourself in a real, authentic, true way, it brings the hunting community together. Now, right. I think social media is an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool when it comes to hunting, hunting recruitment, um, casting a light on what we as hunters actually are. Because the type of video that you put out in doing that shows the non-hunting community, okay, these guys aren't all about killing big giant animals and, you know, some bloodthirsty people that just want to kill stuff like they're true authentic people and they care about the the game they pursue they care about this 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 sport they're playing if you will um so i think social media comes down to two things and i want to talk about both of them be real be authentic show the struggle show the 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 failures show the oh crap i messed up or 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 show the Man, I shot just a bit high on this. And and look, this happens. This is a, a reality of what we do and how we do it. So many hunters don't do that. They just show the big grip and grins and and that casts a negative light as to how easy this is and how it always comes easy and how there's a 180 hiding behind every tree. And you know, show the the real struggle of hunting. But also be true and authentic in your 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 actions in your words in your reactions in your emotions but i also think social media can be the downfall to us as hunters because what happens a lot of times is you get a, a person shooting their first deer and, and they're incredibly excited and they're pumped and they share that on social media saying just shot my first deer holy cow you know Maybe it's a video like yours. Maybe it's just a picture. But they share that, and then the negative comments come. And that person reads it, and they say, well, okay, I guess I'm I'm not good enough to do this anymore. I guess I'm not one of the hunters. Um, it, you know, my deer wasn't good enough, I guess. And it pushes them away before we ever even get them in the fold. You know, it pushes them away right. before we ever really create a new hunter. And I think... That's my biggest pet peeve, man, is just negative. And you even get it about big deer, which is stupid. Like I had a kid last year yeah. shoot a 241-inch deer here in Kansas. Just a, a banger. I mean, incredible deer. And all of the comments come out saying, oh, what a high fence, bro. Nice, dude. What'd you do? Yeah. Walk up and shake a bucket and shoot him? And I'm like, I know where he shot this deer. I can take you to the spot. It's not a high fence. Yeah. It's not a pin-raised deer. It's an incredible buck. And you want to bash him because he shot a good deer? Like, yeah, I, I don't get it, man. And and we push people away from the sport that we claim that we want new people to join. It's right. stupid. Yeah, that really frustrates me too. And I will I will tell you, there are some moments in there where, you know, during that video, and like I said, this is a small percentage of comments, but there were some, you know, like this dude right here, you know, yada, yada, this is, you know, or saying I was Luke Bryan or whatever, because Luke Bryan had that video of him freaking out. It had nothing to do <laughs> with that. Down? I mean, it, it, is he down? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic video. That's a real emotion. Like, there's nothing put on by that. And, you know, it's like, look, dude, I'm just being me. So, like, don't take the fun away from it, you know. And, like, I posted a picture on my Instagram. Yes, I know it's a spike. Yes, you can also walk around my house, you know, and. I don't have to prove it to you. I've killed giants before. So I'm not even, you know, worried about that, you know, and I've been fortunate to, it's not a bragging thing, but it's like, you know, don't tear somebody else down behind your keyboard to make yourself feel better. When you, for one, know nothing about that person too, know nothing about the situation that they were in three. Like you said, 
and Michael Waddell preaches about it all the time. It's it's all about getting other people into it. Like God put these animals on earth. There's a reason he made them edible. And they were put here to be harvested, you know, by us. And they have to be thinned out. It's, it has to or it's populations are going to go rampant and crazy. And, you know, there has to be regulations on it. And thank God, you know, that we have laws and stuff in place to regulate it, you know. Shout out Teddy Roosevelt, but the North American model of conservation works. Yep. There's a reason yep. that last year Pope and Young had 13 new world records. You know, you hear right. old people, you hear old guys say, "Well, back in, dude, the, the hunting used to be that was the glory days." No, they're getting bigger and better and more and and more abundant now than ever. Why? Because the North American model of of conservation works. Because yep. killing off more deer grows bigger deer. And, and that's why the non-hunting community will never understand that. They, they never will. But it goes back to what you said, too, on, on the social media deal. You don't know the situation. You don't know what that person's going through. You don't know. Like, last year, I shot a dink. And I mean a dink of a buck. And the yep. amount of comments that I got was just outrageous. They're like, oh, yeah. You work in the hunting industry and you can't even shoot a big deer. You work for Pope and Young and you can't even shoot a big deer. You you host a podcast and you're shooting these. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Well, just so you know, I had a four-year-old with me, my son. You're not going to get a right. 180 walking out with your son playing with Hot Wheels in the dirt. And listen, <laughs> me and my son hunted harder maybe for that little dink than I, than I had ever hunted. Because right. so many times... Deer would step out at 200 yards, and my son would go, ah, there they are, Dad. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And they'd run off. So many right. times he would say, here come the deer. Or he would pop up and say, Dad, here they come. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, son, you, you've got to stop, man. We hunted right. so hard. And so finally when I have a little dink at 20 yards and my son's saying, Dad, let's shoot him. I'm like, you're right. Let's shoot him. Man. And I punch yeah. my tag with a little deer. And my son – the way my son acted can never be replaced with anything like it. Dude, I would have rather shot that deer than say, yeah. all right, buddy, I'm going to have to leave you at home so I can actually go hunt and kill a big one because the way his eyes lit up, the way he jumped up and down and he said, dad, we got our deer. Like I was like, you're right. Oh, buddy, man. We did. Like it was just outrageously cool. And I'm like, all oh, these comments, yeah. I'm like, dude, I hope you don't treat my son like this when he shoots his first deer because I don't care right. what he shoots. And I never have. Like when I take a new hunter, yeah. when I took my wife hunting, when my wife decided she wants to go on this journey, I had plenty of conversations with her saying, listen, whatever you want to shoot, you shoot it. I'm not going to be here sitting you telling, tell, nah, that's not big enough. Let's wait for a bigger one. I'm not going to do that. If you want to shoot a doe right. when it comes out, shoot the doe. If you want to shoot a forky when it comes out, shoot a forky. I'm not going to put that on you. I'm not going to going to And listen, she was hunting on one of my properties. Like and and I told her I said if a giant comes out, you smoke it. Like I'm not going to say, "Oh, sweetheart, sure. that was a deer I've been hunting for 5 years." Like you shoot whatever you want to shoot and be proud right. of it. And I just wish so many more people and again going back to being authentic, man, I just wish so many more people would would cast a better light on on hunting but would also cast a better light on people who post pictures and post videos and share their hunting experiences absolutely and you know it's like it's like you said dude that that story just gets me fired up about your little boy because my little girl she's 15 months old and she walks around you know she's just started kind of like walking around and she's like pointing up at the deer on the wall i can't wait just to take her you know, whether she wants to kill like one or not, ready, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I think so. But like, you know, just to set her <laughs> on my lap, like that's what it, that's what it's all about, dude. That moment right there, your little boy is going to remember that for the rest of his life. And he may get into hunting because of it, you know, and he may just be a diehard. Oh, and that's what it's about. You have, we got to get the next generation of people into this. And you know what? For those people that don't like hunting or whatever, that's totally cool. Everybody has their own opinion it leaves more for the rest of us. So no bad blood on those folks, but don't, uh, don't break us down. You know, the first, the first words out of his mouth, 
He said two sentences. The first sentence was, Dad, can we eat his body? And I'm like, dude, 100% we can. <laughs> and he's going to taste great because he's a year old. And the second word is <laughs> out of his mouth, Dad, Dad, can I hang him on my wall in my room? And I'm like, you bet you can, bud. You bet. Absolutely. And so, like, that, dude, that right there, is what it's what it's all about, man. Like it it it's not a size game. It's not a now don't get no. me wrong. Just like yourself, man, you gotta progress, you gotta graduate, you gotta, you know, at some point you gotta say, Okay, I've shot enough one twenties, let's try to shoot a one forty. You know, at some point you gotta, you know, you wanna push the limits and try to get bigger and better. But hey, if all you want to shoot is those, go shoot those, man. I don't care. If all you want to shoot is one twenties because you like killing deer, go kill deer, man. It's 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 your tag. I'm not gonna tell you how to use it. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, dude, this, this is like kind of my, my hunting room out kind of in my garage. It's kind of like my spot, but dude, there's a wall full of 120s, probably less than that up here, you know, and all my, all my big deer shoulder mounted inside my house. But it's like, man, I had to start somewhere. There's some deer on this wall. I think about, Oh my God, dude, if you, you would, if you wouldn't have shot that deer would have been a giant, but I was young. I was figuring it out. I was by myself. I was hunting by myself. It's hard not to get excited. So I did my fair share and now I've graduated and I'm just like, okay, now I'm studying the age. Now I'm studying the horns. Oh, he could go, he could go another year. Oh no, he looks good. You know, it's just all about the process. Well, and that's what like people walk into my, my trophy room, if you want to call it that. And they're looking around like, oh dude, that's a cool deer. Oh man, that's a, where'd you shoot that one at? That's a banger. And then they get to one and they're like, why did you shoot that? And I'm like, well, that one there actually is the most special deer in the whole room because it was my first buck with a bow. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, dude, it doesn't matter. Man, there's times in life where it doesn't matter, you know, what I shoot. It's it's special. And, you know, I had a kid born on November 7th knowing <laughs> my, my middle kid was born on November 7th, knowing I'm not going to get a lot of time to hunt this year. Um, So on November right. 10th, I snuck out. I'm like, baby, you good? I'm going to go out and just just shoot something, you know, and be done. And so I shot a smaller deer, but I'm like, listen, I don't have time this year to go out and, and, sure. and hunt a lot. And so, man, there's just so many different situations that you find yourself in and it becomes more about the hunt and the trophy. And, and it sure. always should be, you know, it always should be. Absolutely, man. Now, what would you say um, to the adult onset hunter? Much like yourself, who said, "Man, I just never had anybody to teach me. I never, I've never got to dive into that. I've never, I've never, I, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a dad or an uncle or a grandpa who took me out hunting. But I really want to do this. What do you say to that person? Man, I would just tell them that it's never too late to start anything. I mean, I didn't start until I was bow hunting because I was, you know, twenty five, twenty six years old, and you know." I, I run into hunters all the time. I see guys at the bow shop all the time that are 60 something that are just like, you know, I want to try this. It's something I've kind of always wanted to do. My shoulders are still good. You know, like I just don't think there's an age limit or there's not a number on it. There's no rules in bow hunting that says, Hey, if you're 90 years old, you're not allowed to pull back this bow. Like there's no warning labels on it. There's no nothing. There's no rules. So, you know, as young as you want to go to as old as you are. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like I think as long people need to do what I did and they need to, if you're knocking it, just try it. And if you try it and you don't like it, that's fine. You can go shoot a rifle all you want. Um, I'm a diehard bow hunter now and I still shoot a rifle. Like I'm not just going to give it up, but and some guys are like, Oh man, I'm never going back to a rifle. I'm like, well, I still enjoy that. And that's fine. I still enjoy shooting a rifle, but I would just tell them, man, it's never too late to get started. I mean, just do it, shoot, practice. And once you sling that arrow through one, your first one, odds, chances are better than average that, you know, you're going to be hooked like I was. Yeah. And I just tell people like, there will always be obstacles. Whether you start when you're a kid or whether you start when you're an adult, the obstacles might look different. Uh, You know, when you're a kid, it's money. It's, 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 you know lack of opportunity because mom and dad won't take you whatever for whatever reason there's always going to be obstacles and when you're an adult it's it's information it's it's time it's you know all these things there will always be obstacles you have to overcome but it's worth it like it's worth it to try it um it's worth it to to get involved there's obstacles to overcome in, in anything now 
I want to say to the person who's intimidated by trying it, we live in an era that is just there. There's a, a, a plethora of good knowledge of good wisdom being shared on social media. So you can dive in and you can learn so much on YouTube from from incredible archers, um, you know, that put out fantastic information. Uh, but I've always wanted this podcast to be a place where new and old hunters can come and learn and find inspiration and grow as outdoorsmen. And so, you know, I'm always open to taking phone calls and taking emails about, hey, I, I want to get into this, but I don't know how. Can you help me? A hundred percent. Dude, the most the most rewarding thing in my career is when I get an email that says, hey, I've always wanted to try this, but I've always been intimidated. But because of the information on the podcast or because of of Chris sharing his story, I gave it a shot, man. Look at the first doe I killed. That's the best thing you could ever do for me. So to send Absolutely. me an email or to shoot me a message on Instagram or Facebook or whatever and just say, hey, what kind of bow do I even need to get started? I would absolutely love to help you. There's a, a wealth of knowledge out there. So don't let the intimidation of I don't want to ask stupid questions and look dumb. I, I Don't let that stop you. Guys, go into right. a bow shop and ask all of the questions. I don't care how stupid you think it is. I don't care how stupid you think you might look. Everybody had to start somewhere. Everybody had to yep. ask the questions at some point. So don't be afraid to ask the questions and to to say, hey, I don't know how to do this, but I want to. Um, I, I said it one time on a podcast, the three hardest words for any man to say is I don't know. Because we're prideful, yep. we, we want to act like we got it all under control. <laughs> but when you're starting in this journey of hunting, you know, whether you're starting with a rifle, a crossbow, a compound, a recurve, whether you start, don't be afraid to say, hey, I don't know. I don't know what arrows I should shoot. Don't know what broadheads I should shoot. I don't know how to tune this thing. I don't know how to sight this thing in. I don't know my poundage. I don't know my draw length. Don't be afraid to say those things. Everybody had to ask those questions at some point. So don't be afraid to ask. But Chris, man, where can they find you at? Man, I'm all over socials. Uh, I think everything is pretty much at Chris Colson on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, TikTok, Spotify, anywhere you can download music. All my music is up there. You can look me up on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I'm all over the webs, man. Guys, don't hold it against him that he's an LSU fan. He will see the light one day. Um, he will go recognize Tigers. his mistakes at some point, um, I promise. So don't hold that against him. Guys, go check him out. Uh, he puts out incredible hunting content, but also great music. So go check out Chris and everything he's got going on. Um, man, I hope to uh, hope to share a camp with you one day. Um, be a lot of fun. My favorite people to share a camp with is uh, is musicians because they offer they offer uh, entertainment. So That's I get right. to share a camp I got to go, honey. I don't know if you know who Rhett Walker is, um, but he's a Christian singer. Um, got a bit of a okay. country twang to him, but um, we're going on a hunt and and setting up his first bow. And man, that made me so proud because he said, "Hey, I want to. I'm a big time turkey hunter, but I want to get into bow hunting." So he's coming down to Wichita for a concert, and we're meeting at Cabela's next week to set up a bow and get him some arrows and teach him how to shoot. And so. Don't ever be afraid to ask the questions. Don't ever be afraid to, to, to make the jump and to start. Everybody's got to start somewhere. So don't let the intimidation keep you from enjoying one of the greatest sports you could ever know. Guys, I know, I know. Uh, cheap, interchangeable blade knives. They're all in the rage. Change your blade right there, and you can keep going. And it, It's cool, and I have one in my bag, and I like to keep one in my bag. However, there is no replacement for a well-built, hand-forged, knife something that i know is dependable it's strong if i pick it up it's going to be sharp it's going to be ready to go um these right here are knives built by my good friend nick deeker nick's knife works and um the most beautiful part of this is it's not cut and dry you don't just pick out a knife and say well i guess that's the one i need no 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 he built this one specifically to the length that i wanted it I wanted this to fit right on the side of my binocular harness so it was always there, always ready for me to grab. He built this one to fit really small in my pocket uh, for an everyday carry. Guys, a good hand-forged knife is worth its weight in gold. Go check out Nick Deeker at nicksknifeworks.com. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Y'all have a fantastic week. <laughs>